Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to Heavy Repping. My name is John Tron Davidson, and I'm here once again in our super best fancy fancy shirt shirt test location in the southwest of England. One of the things that I hear most often from people is that the material and thickness of plectrums doesn't make a difference, and that a pick is a pick. Now, if you've ever tried a 0.3 Dunlop nylon and then a 500 series 2mm, you will know that that's not the case. However, it did make me think of a video that I did a long time ago that I never did proper justice to, and that is the drop test. Now, in the original drop test video, um, I filmed it totally wrong, so I am here to atone for that, and I've got much, much better equipment to do this with. So, what we're going to do today is make use of a whole bunch of picks, some of which are in my enormous Dunlop bowl, and some of which are in this little bowl here. And what we're going to do is drop them on the table and we're going to record that and I'm going to let you hear what the difference is. Now the reason why this is a thing is because Vinny from VPix, who is a great lad, shout outs to Vinny, uh, he is the one that introduced me to this by a video he did a long time ago. It's a little bit like if you're sounding wood, so if you have a piece of wood and you tap it like that, you can hear what the tonal property is of it. Pix is exactly the same. Just remember that whatever sound the pick makes when it's dropped on the table, that is the inherent sound of that plectrum. That's the sound of the material and the thickness and so on. So when you go into your strings, that is the sound that you're working with. So we're going to use two mediums to do this, one of which is a Shure SM58 and the other one, thanks to Break the Machine, shout outs to Andy, is this. This is the Zeppelin Design Labs Cortado Mark III. Now this is a contact microphone, a very fancy contact microphone. The most important thing is that the Shure will be able to measure the sound around the pick and the contact mic will be able to measure the sound as it hits the table. So without further ado, let me switch into my alternative camera position and we'll do the business. Just to set the parameters, here on this side is the SM58 and here on this side is the Cotado Mark III. Let's start off nice and light, if we can. Let's go for everybody's favourite, the Jazz 3. This is the Stiffo version. Now every material has a threshold for usefulness. I personally think that you're starting to get the most out of Altex and a lot of other things like acrylic and kyanite. Once you go past one and a half to two millimeters, that's really when it starts to come to the fore. Under that, it can be a little bit plinky. So by way of demonstrating this, here is the Dunlop Flow 1.5 mil. I'm going to follow that up with the Flow Gloss two millimeters. Let's see what happens when we up that to three millimeters with the Prime Tone standard sculpted. Let's try uh, a final Dunlop before we get into the deep stuff. This is a Jazz Prime Tone Polycarbonate and it's quite a bit thicker than everything else that we've tried so far. Polycarbonate naturally has quite a kind of hard, plinky sound to it, kind of like Altex, um, but it's less aggressive. Let's move into the Batik world now. We're going to start with this, which is the Chicken Picks Shredder 3.2. It's made of thermoplastic. Thermoplastic is a very broad term, but EPO is pretty tight-lipped about what these are made of. Uh, another name some of you might be very familiar with, this is a Windspear Shiv. Uh, this is made from peak or polyether ether ketone. This at its thickest point is 3.8mm, uh, so similar sort of territory here. This is my 3.4mm uh, Mintone ST. This is made from Galilith. Uh, which is uh, a dairy protein filled with formaldehyde. It's quite common in gypsy jazz and also in uh, things like buttons and so on. By contrast, this is a 4.1mm Kilinonis Jade Turbo. This is also made from Galilith, but it's got a brass insert and Stingray leather on the back. Much, much harder. Even though those two materials are essentially the same, the insert's making a huge difference, and that very much comes out in the power of what the pick has to offer. So let's enter the natural world now. This is my JTD XL made by Zwart Plectrums in Italy. Uh, it is two and a half millimeters and it's made from cow bone. It's amazing. Um, 
I know it goes without saying you've probably all got headphones on at this point because it'd be kind of pointless to hear this out of your phone when we're talking about such detail and everything. Uh, but it, it, what I'm so used to using these and hearing them uh, coming off the table is a whole other experience. Staying with the natural world, this is a Howling Monkey Fatty. This one is 2.96 millimeters, but it is a little bit larger than a 351. This is the final furlong, and we're into big lad territory. 6.47 millimeters. This is a Zwart uh, ST, and it's made from Zuricote, which is a super, super hard wood. Sounds like wood. <laughs> That's a great sound. Hard rather than big in this instance is this. This is the pink gin. It's from Stone Age. This is an old Stone Age pick. Uh, it still looks exactly the same as the day that I got it. <laughs> That is the beauty of Agate. Sure, it's the map. Uh, this one uh, is about three, four millimeters from memory. Uh, it would be interesting to hear how this sounds. Yep, that's definitely stone. It's firm, but it's not a hard, plasticky snap. So we're going to have a quick run from uh, the sort of seven-ish area all the way up into double figures. This is the Vpix Colossal. Uh, this is a healthy... 8.57 millimeters and it sounds like this i mean these are big these are big plectrums right this is an eight millimeter uh Isetti, uh saponetta uh the saponetta standard it's right-handed beveled as well this is pretty meaty it's also very loud now this is a bit of an odd one because this is uh, an iron age megalith ultra this is made from uhmwpe which is uh, definitely the province of the higher end of pickmakers. And this has HR carved in the back and it glows in the dark. But this material naturally can be quite soft uh, in terms of its sound, so I'm expecting a kind of muted rumble. This pirouette there. <laughs> this is a javelin anchor. Um, it is quite large. Not the largest thing you're going to see today, but this is pretty big. Uh, nine millimeter, nine and a half millimeters, I think. Bloody hell! <laughs> wow, that really was. <laughs> I'm trying to drop them all from the same height. Uh, the waveform is ridiculous. Now, of course, the pit community uh, does have its fair share of mimetics, let's say, and I thought I would close on the uh, not the largest pick that I currently have, but it's certainly up there. Uh, this is from a video that will be forthcoming, and I'd like to give a big shout out to Lawrence uh, for this. Uh, this came to me from him via Brock from BHL. This is the Kraken. It is 27 millimeters. Uh, it's made from UHMWPE, and I'm including it here out of curiosity because this isn't as hard to play this as play with as you would think, and it's not the largest pick he sent me but I think it's good for this test. So let's see how well the cardioid can survive uh, this plectrum. A little bit, a little bit nervous about this, but that's okay. <laughs> Amazing. Uh, yeah, it's like being hit by a car. So I hope you enjoyed this little experiment. Uh, it certainly was a lot of fun for me, and if you're not enjoying what you're doing, it's kind of a bit pointless. Uh, the Zeppelin Design Labs thing really surprised me because obviously some of these are pretty huge and it's picking up all the sound of the desk. Um, but the beautiful thing about it is it's not picking up other stuff. So when I put this sound file up, uh, really all that you're capturing is the vibration that went through the microphone. And that's the beauty of contact mic. So you're, it's designed to work underwater, it's designed to work on your instrument and so on. And uh, it's designed to be incredibly tough. Uh, the phantom power thing is great. I'm using a Focusrite Scarlet 2i2, which has uh, phantom power, and it works no bother at all. It doesn't interfere with my main microphone, which is just off camera. So uh, I hope it's been a little bit entertaining and at least let you hear just how much of a difference there is as you go up materials because we're dropping them all from the same height. So remember, if you'd like to like, share and subscribe for all the news from the Plectroverse, you are more than welcome to do so. You can hit us up at Heavy Repping and go to the website where you can buy a lot of the picks that were in the video today. In the meantime, my name is John Tron Davidson. This 
is heavy repping. And I'll see you soon. So remember, if you're not sure what to do in life, rep hard and rep heavy.